ever pay for a meal? Steve, have you ever? No. Nick says he never pays for I'm a meal. Never. We, ne we keep waiting. See, I could do that. I, have I don't have. Kids. I just don't have the guts to do that. I mean, yeah. there's too much shame involved, you know, to keep going back. I could eat as sponsors. Seriously, I could That's never true. pay for another meal as long as I'm in this business, okay, as long as I'm here. You don't have it in you. I, I don't. I can't. Yeah. I, it's just, uh, Neither do I. Some people have no shame. Neither do I. When he reached over and kept grabbing more and more of those Char Hut certificates, I thought to myself, this is shocking, okay? Shocking. First it was a couple... Then it was a couple more, and then it was like a part of the stack. It was like a chunk, you know, off the top there. Yeah, I didn't take a one. I didn't either. Gave them to listeners. Uh, you know, I could eat free vast and oh, yeah. time. Oh, yeah. People are always wanting to give me food. I just don't have it in So anyway, there. you're a great guy, Hank, and we love you, but stick it in your ear, okay? <laughs> Mind your own business. And tell all your butt lickers on air sports talk. Just uh, stick to sports, okay? Leave the valley talking to us and stick to sports. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you today? Okay. Bird, how are you doing? Okay. This is Reggie Mantle's good buddy. Who? Reggie Mantle's good buddy. How long has somebody forget? Reggie Andy. Mantle. Reggie Mantle. Bird, you should know who I am. No. Okay. Any more hints? <clears throat> nah. Okay. I'm, I'm so listening. glad we finally went back to the phone. <laughs> hey, listen. Um, you were t talking about Fat Rich enjoying his food. Too bad earlier. the Mets fans won't be able to have any lunch with us today, isn't it? <laughs> You were talking about Fat Rich enjoying his food earlier? Yeah. Well, he enjoyed my food, too, on Saturday. Did he? Had a plate of a couple <laughs> slices of pizza there. He <laughs> went and took a picture with me, and he took the pizza right off of the Of course. Plate. That's right. you got to yeah. watch him at every move, man. you got to watch meatballs? him at every turn. What? How were the meatballs? The meatballs were sensational. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I had. I had a meatball, and I had uh, some pizza. sausage and peppers and a, one slice of pizza. Me, too. I would have liked to have had another meatball, but there was some, the guy with the hairnet. Mm-hmm. You know the one I'm talking well, about? Yeah, I sure do. He's standing in line. Just he shows up every time, that very weird guy with a hairnet, and he uh, ate all the meatballs. Did he? Yeah. Well, what they did he was... He thought it was Sadie's Buffet, I think. <laughs> After you guys were done, they brought the rest of the tray over to the other table, and there was a meatball and a half there, and the, the dog man, I guess the guy with the bat shirt that they were trying to get rid of earlier, mm -hmm. he was just putting stuff in his pocket. It was unbelievable. Yeah. He was <laughs> scarfing it all up, a real guy. Yeah, he, first of all, he scarfs it all up, then he starts... Screaming. He stands out in the middle of the crowd and starts screaming mm -hmm. about how little food, there's not enough food for everybody and what a rip-off this is. So we finally had his ass kicked down. Hey, listen, we had to wait a little bit for the food, but it was just sensational. Yeah, it is. Eat, eat at the, uh, the salvos quite often. Got a Hank's, Hank's spy report for you. Quite overdue, in fact. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm a season ticket holder down at the arena for the Heat game, and I spent the whole season with the privilege of hanging Hank sitting right across from me you know, in the press area with Tony Sargento and uh, the like. And that man can eat. Yeah. Nothing, no, no two ways about it. We Absolutely. Used take, we used to take bets before every game. You know, how many times Hank's going to go out for food and uh, the total <laughs> of the food he's going to eat. And I want quite a bit of money there. I don't want to eat roses in listening right now because I know that's illegal. But, uh, man. You know how some people have to win money and they have to do something to get money to cover their gambling losses? Hank has to win money to cover his eating losses, okay? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, he'd be stuffing nachos in a hamburger and uh, <laughs> drinking beers and slapping Melvin Bratton on the back. And yeah. boy, he was having a good time. Those sports there. people, man, they know how to suck it up, don't they? Well, I think I'm going ch to change my career. I'm going to become a sportsman because I understand it didn't cost them anything. Yeah. Uh, just so he gets to be a uh, team loader. You got it. He's, now, a, he's a great guy, guy like really. Said, but he really is a great guy. And, and I wish he'd stop chilling for the track and for the Dolphins. And, you know, just tell it like it is, Hank. Yeah. Don't claim to tell it like it is. You can tell it like it is. Like Joe Zagaki, right? There you go. Hey, folks. Learn a yeah. lot from Joe. This is Jughead, all right? Oh, it's Jughead. Of course. How oh. soon they forget. That's right. Okay, Jug. Okay, right, Juggy. We'll Next month. See okay, ya. Man. Have a good life. Okay. Yeah, I remember now. Pressure packed first hour. We got a lot of stuff in that hour. Oh. We didn't get too much about this news story about the pathetically low pay embarrassing and humiliating and speaking of that Henry Barrow is <laughs> it's enough to drive you to drink isn't it? <laughs> working all those years and getting paid like some kind of a schlumper Henry Barrow standing by with the 11 o'clock WIOD news and we're going to come back with our number 2 at 11.05 Steve has another one of those horrendous condo stories Abe and Estelle Hurwitz and their little dog are going to be here with um, the condo meanies from Carriage Hills okay because they don't want them to have their little dog so it's going to really be something, and they're going to be throwing dog bones at each other and having a nervous breakdown. And we got sports talk tonight, Sonny and um, whatever else at 6.05, followed by Bush Bing Bang. Talk Talk with Steve K. This afternoon at 2 on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. Here is Lake Hall Collapse. 
Hence, the opinions expressed by the host, guest, or caller are not necessarily those of the station. Now, here's Neil Rogers on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. But you made a song upon our video dream. Oh, you can't beat that. You know, you're right. I hated that when the first I mean, as came. much as I like Dion, that music right there, you can't beat it. It's really grown on me. Anyway, it's 1106 at WIOD. We're just having a great Monday here, and uh, we covered a lot of ground, boy, in that first right. hour. And um, can't wait till Hank is on the air again so we can, you know, take a little shot back, which I'm sure he will. Mm-hmm. I just don't understand it. I mean, why doesn't he mind his own stinking business, okay? I had a bad experience. I, I agonized about it on the air, didn't I? Mm-hmm. And I said I didn't want to hurt the image of all the other kids who are good and honest and don't do it, and I didn't have a problem out there before. But when two people get ripped off back-to-back on the same day... It looks like they're developing a problem out there, okay? But one thing about a lot of businesses in this town, in this state, in Florida, it's a Florida way of doing business, don't confuse us. For example, up north, and I guess here, too, if it's a good restaurant, you go in, and if you have a bad experience, you go to the manager and tell them, and they're happy to hear about it because they want to know. Of course they want to know. A lot of places down here you do that, they look at you like, get the hell out of here and go to hell, don't ever come back, you know, that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? But to be fair... It would be like if somebody called the show and said, uh, we don't like that you eat on the air. That would be like my saying, get lost, don't ever call the show again, as opposed to saying, okay, we will never do it again. <laughs> right? Which we always do that, don't we? That's not a good example. I, I thought really it was a magnificent I don't example. Think so. <laughs> anyway, tomorrow we're doing a four-hour... We're going to bring a psychologist in who's going to talk about Steve's obsession with getting everything for free. <laughs> that was about It's going to be great. <laughs> I've been waiting for this show. Movie passes, food. I mean, it, Steve really just uh, has this little hang-up. He's got this obsession with getting things for free. Amazing. I think the Chinese call that a schnorr. Isn't that what they call it? <laughs> Chinese. It's 11.07 at WIOD. We'll take a call in Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. Hi, this is Ann from Cardiology. I came by to you most the other day. Yeah. And my co-workers are probably listening. We all want to thank you for posting that little thing on our door. Everyone who comes in my office gets to see that I was really there. Yeah. And, uh, you were there. I can testify to that. Oh, uh, yes. And I want to tell the boy that I'm very sorry he didn't look up when I was there. I was a little bit disappointed. You um, were? What yeah, do you mean? I was kind of hurt. Don't you remember me? Of course I do. And I was very sad that you didn't even say hello to me. The, don't well, he was occupied. He had uh, he had Robin there the first half, and then he had the dork lady the second half. And he wasn't he wasn't talking to anybody else. He was mindlessly signing autographs on pictures, <laughs> paying no attention to any of the people. There were a lot of ton of nice people out there, including you. I'm a nice but people. But he yeah. exactly. But he just was uh, totally oblivious because he had his well, two uh, groupies there sitting there salivating on their. Uh, that's <laughs> not really on true. Their there were a lot of people talking to me. What you have to do is just. Why don't you just say something? Yeah, like, like, like throw a kiss in your direction or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah why yeah, didn't you yeah. do that? Well, yeah, well, I'm, I don't know. I just stop by saying I'm not a groupie mentality. Well, the way it looked to me is you didn't speak to me. I'm sorry, but well, you, you know, this you is know. an interesting call because in person you were great. On the phone, you're just, this, maybe it's the phone. You know, it's a bad phone. Well, I don't like know. I'm nightmare. sorry. I don't know what's missing from my so, voice on the phone. But anyway. Nothing like it. No. Well, we have tons of cardiological things to do here, so I just wanted to say that. And so I'm kind of hurt because you never did speak to me. Yeah. Well, you broke You broke her channel. heart. You broke her heart. You broke my that. heart. That's right. Isn't that cute? <laughs> uh, it, it, was, it was pretty cute. And I, well, thank you very much. Also, it's a pleasure meeting the dark lady. Yeah. Yes, it was really very impressive. She's nice, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, thanks a lot, Neil. You're my idol. Okay. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> see Bye. ya. Okay. She's interesting. Uh, 1109 at WIOD, it's Scuba Sports Super Grand Opening Sale celebrating their new Sunrise location. And starting this Friday, you can get up to 50% off on every item in stock at all Scuba Sports locations. At Sunrise, be sure to register to win a complete Sherwood dive package, including regulators, buoyancy jackets, or a dive computer from Orca. Get a free T-shirt with any $25 purchase. And be sure to check out their new huge indoor training pool. And best of all, get fantastic savings on every item in stock. It's Scuba Sports Super Grand Opening Sale, and it starts this Friday. And then on Saturday, meet factory reps from Sherwood, Sequest, Crescent, Oceanic, Winoka, and Underwater Kinetics with thousands of dollars of prizes waiting for you to win. Huge savings on all items, free T-shirts with any $25 purchase. Bring your bathing suit and experience the thrill of scuba diving in their newest training facility at Scuba Sports in the Sun Plaza that's on University Drive, just north of Sunrise Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now see, that wasn't just a mindless 
jingle. <laughs> that was for a reason, and that's because Blind Mike uh, blessed us with his presence. Yes, he did. Everybody was there on Saturday. I couldn't believe it. Me either. Sharon showed up, and Nick, and um, on and on and on and yeah, on. Yeah, on and on. Everybody. <laughs> I, I just was shocking. Everybody you'd ever hope to see, and a few you hope never to see. Again. <laughs> Bob was there from Cooper City, right. so he better govern himself accordingly. And uh, Joey was there, mm -hmm. and Joe... I didn't see Joe. Was Joe was there. there. Joe was there Joe. with a friend of his, and they were, like, backed up against the wall because they were keeping their eye on their uh, truck. They wanted to make sure oh. they had a terry cloth thing over their license plate so nobody could take the number. <laughs> and uh, it was just uh, amazing. I've never seen anything like it in my life. We don't want to keep boring you with this because, obviously, the rest of you who didn't show up didn't, couldn't care less, right? Oh. But I, I think uh, I finally had an impact when I said, let's get some different and new and people to show up because we had a whole... Tons right. of people that we've never met before, eh? including Many. a few of the chronic regulars. Mm -hmm. so just enough to spice it up. Yeah, but a lot of chronics that we had never met. Yeah. Oh, exciting. yeah, loads of new people, which yeah. was great. Because mm -hmm. who the hell wants to do those things and go out and see the same hundred people every time, you know? I mean, some of them are nice people, and then again, some of them are real morons, okay? Here's a mobile in Broward. Hello. Hi. Yeah. How you doing, Neil? Great. Listen, I didn't get a chance to see you in the birds uh, yesterday because I wasn't there. And, well, uh, you know what? We weren't there yesterday either, so uh, Saturday. <laughs> Saturday. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Is that what day it was? No wonder I didn't see you yesterday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like going out to Calder today. In fact, I'll guarantee you the Valley Parkers won't touch anything of yours today. <laughs> yeah. Because right. they're not racing today. Go out to Calder. Go out to High Line. Yeah. There you go. Have a nice, safe day. Right. Uh, just a couple of things, like uh, the Cubs suck. Mm-hmm. They, they, they lose three in a row. Well, they scored one run in three games. You don't win too many games with a third of a run a game. That's true. What happened when they played the Mets last time? They scored like 30 but runs in three funny games. Robin like that. Well, yeah. things, uh, you know, they have that way. You know, I, I love the way everybody's seizing upon this. They had won five in a row, including two in Montreal. Yes. Up until these three. The fact is they don't play well at Wrigley Field. They suck at home. They're great on the road, but they stink at home. Well, it's time to tear that stadium down. Exactly. I'm all for that. Yeah, a dome stadium or something. Yeah. Play in the winter. With artificial turf. They play well on the artificial turf with all those stolen bases. Yeah, but then they, they got all the old timers won't be able to play on that kind of stuff, so they'll have to start getting some more new players. What old timers? They don't well, have any old timers. Andre Dawson, for he, one. Yeah, he's a real old man. He's 34 years old. He's the oldest guy on the team, probably. Yeah, well, you, when you play 15 years, you're an old man, right? Okay, whatever you say. <laughs> okay, and also I just want to say Max the Hack is a douchebag, and have a nice day. Okay. Bye-bye. And the same to you. <laughs> Okay, 11.15 at WIOD. Yeah, if uh, there's anything you don't like about the show, just call in. We'll change it immediately, okay? We don't, uh, this business about, uh, we're not interested. What kind of crap is that? Who said that? Like I was talking about some of the restaurants. Oh. oh. If you have a complaint, they should kiss the ground. I mean, if it's a legitimate complaint. If you're just one of those pain in the ass people that complain everywhere, it's like people that go into a restaurant, order steak, okay, and they eat 90% of the steak, and then they call over the waiter and they say, oh, this was too tough or it was, wasn't cooked right. I'm not going to pay for it. Okay? Those are just more people looking for a stinking free meal. Yeah. That's like watching 80% of a movie and then walking out and saying, I don't like the movie. I want my money back. Yeah. You know? and people right. do that. That would be like listening to this show till about till the lightning round mm -hmm. and then saying you want your money back. Yeah. Okay? Let's go to Boca. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can I get my money back? Okay. Right now, as a matter of fact, call up Hank. Here's his number. Listen, what, you know, I read that article, too, about the caller. Yeah. What, and, and you mentioned he's in town today? Yes. Is there any chance he's coming back? Yes. Well, what do you think he's doing here? Coming to buy a house? Of course. He's here uh, with a chance to get uh, located again. Hot damn. Yeah. He was posted, where? Of course. I'm one of his oldest fans. Well, he's a great guy, and I talked to him on Friday, and he's still, he's still uh, you know, got a great mm -hmm. sense of humor. I don't know how, but he... I, <laughs> I, did. I told him he really ought to write a book. He thought I was mm -hmm. joking, but I'm he not. Should. He should write a book because he's had more nightmares in this business than yeah. anybody could imagine. I mean, just beyond belief. Yeah, he really ought to. Including the way they screwed him over at this company. I want to underline that several times because they mm -hmm. screwed him here so bad I remember it that well. it's just pathetic, yeah. tragic. They ought to hang their heads in shame. Absolutely. That's good news. I'm glad to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, Nick Trigoni's got the gall to say to me when I first came here, well, you know, what Bill does is passe. That's, well, if that's the case, it, which isn't true, but if it were the case, how come they hired him in the first place, okay? Yeah, really. Bunch of douchebags. He is so great. Yes, he is. Yeah. Funny guy. Keep me posted on what he's doing. I'll do it. Hey. See ya. Bye. 11.17 at WIOD. What am I getting excited about? Well, I took IOD off my radio button when they fired Bill Calder. And he got, and I'll tell you another guy that really, really screwed him over badly, badly, was Howard Premer over at KAT. 
I mean, Bill, you know, he wasn't happy working overnight. Nobody, you know, mm -hmm. happy working overnight at INZ. But at least he had a good thing going. You know, we had that thing back and forth. Mm -hmm. I was on 8 to midnight. He was on overnight. So we, I used to stick around every now and then. We had a terrific thing going. And he had giant numbers. He beat the crap out of Wichner. And, of course, at that time, Wichner still had good numbers before most of his audience died. And um, the bottom line is, Primer comes along and hires him away. In fact, it's in this article about how they were going to resurrect the great entertainers at oh, KAT. Yeah, right. Well, I don't know if I ever told this story on the air, but one of the guys who's got a piece of the action at KAT uh, invited me to dinner one night here a couple of years ago without telling me what station it was. And then gave me this big come on. He's going to give me a piece of the station and was going to do this and that uh, to resurrect KAT. I wish they would just, and of course now it's brokered radio. They just mm -hmm. broker the time, which mm -hmm. is which is the smarmiest way. No, don't turn it down again. He, it was so cold in here. We came in, it was 60 degrees. I put it on 70. Oh, please, please, it's so <laughs> cold. I mean, if I'm cold, you know it's got to be freezing. You'd never complain. These guys are nuts. Is never this going to be a new thing now with the studio over here? Oh, Maybe oh. they need to open the vents up in there and do something, because it was so cold in here, man, today, I thought I was going to die. And I look at the thing, and it was set on 60 degrees. Are these people <laughs> nuts? 60 degrees, you can work in an igloo. <laughs> and he reaches, Mitch reaches his hand in here, and he's got the ready to crank it down again. Don't do it. It's just nice now, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. almost up to 64 now. Yeah, it's it's my breath is better. starting to, in fact, my, my <laughs> mouth is uh, frozen together, my lips. Anyway, what was I saying about KET? And, uh, boy, if I would have ever done that. They, they come along with all these grandiose ideas. They haven't got any idea what they're doing. Just like the thing with Jim Kelly. Remember that? Oh, With the leather really. jacket? Of course. And um, that lasted about 10 minutes. Yeah. The oldie station. Mm. I mean, you know, here's somebody, uh, his father-in-law, whoever it is, somebody in the family, bought Howard the station. Howard used to be a news flunky when I first went over there. He was Joe Fried's yes. assistant. Really? And he sat out there in the lobby one day when Mrs. Hernstead, remember the uh, senator from uh, New Jersey, mm -hmm. the uh, whatever the hell he was, the state senator Hernstead? And uh, he sat out there. She was ready to fire him. And the new PD who had just come in quit. So she brought Howard in. And instead of firing him, she made him program director. <laughs> which gives you an idea of how they run a radio station. <laughs> yeah, Kind of like over here, you know. <laughs> That's a true story. He was waiting. To, he didn't even know it. He was waiting to get fired. And she made him program director. And then all of a sudden, like his father-in-law, somebody had bought the radio station, okay, for $45, whatever it was. And now all of a sudden, he's the programming expert. And what they've done over there, I mean, what they're doing on the air is bad enough, okay? It's pathetic. But the bottom line is what they do to people's careers. Mm -hmm. I mean, Calder's like not, not a child out on the street. He's a, a guy, you know, That's he's a human being with a wife and responsibility. And they gave him a big song in advance, and he went over there, and he said, oh, too much personality, you know, too much. Don't mess around with a traffic guy, and don't do this, and don't do that. And they just made him miserable. Yeah. And then they were going to let him go. They weren't even going to pay him off. And I, I was the one. I'm always the one who has to be involved in these things. I said, don't you dare leave without forcing them to pay off on the rest of the contract. Okay. They were going to just screw him all together. Of course. It's just pathetic. So anyway, it looks like uh, things are looking up and like he's going to, uh, something's going to happen here. So I'll let you know. Well, sure. I guess I'll probably be gone, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll know. Bill could call the book. Do not get in this business. Wouldn't that be a good title for the book? <laughs> You're pretty close. I told him the name of the book should be Stay Out of the Business. <laughs> See? Seriously. See what I'm thinking? And he laughed. He thinks I'm joking. Mm -mm. I mean, if our good friend can keep writing these stupid books. You know, he used to write checks. Now he writes books. <laughs> you know the one I mean. Like, I'm just desperately looking here. I can't. Uh, they're not here. I don't know. Boy, Roger's just gone nuts here with these carts. I can't find anything. <laughs> Like I said, our good friend, uh, the faker, can write all these books. Hi, this is Larry King. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Worth waiting That's the one. Mm -hmm. 22 past 11 at WIOD, and take a little break here, I guess. We'll be right back. <laughs> 26 past 11 at WIOD. He went... Yeah, I heard yes. the... Uh, I heard the... Well, we can take care of that. Who's <laughs> in... Good enough to play the whole thing, but we just don't have time. It's a very busy Monday, isn't it? Boy, isn't it? I guess. 26 <laughs> past 11 at WIOD. We do have an open line in Broward. We haven't given any numbers out here today yet. Isn't that shocking? It is and if anybody's got any more free food that they want to send over for Steve, please do it. <laughs> now, I, I guess we should be the last ones to talk, but, you know, we do it um, with people that are desperate to send it over here. A little you know? different. 
But um, it's one thing to like grovel, you know what I mean? Although we've groveled on the air at times when it looked like we were going to get shined. But it's just not the same. No, it isn't the same. Not quite the same genre. Right. Miami, hello. What's the question? Uh, Long time, Neely. Neil. How you doing, Larry? (laughs) Okay, I've kind of got a Mickey Dane spy report that ties into that. I was on a plane in Washington, D.C. that was boarding, though, I guess about three weeks ago, and uh, (laughs) here she comes waddling down the jetway, and... (laughs) Seems to be having some difficulty, and she told the flight attendant it was a long show. Oh, what show was that, ma'am? Uh, Larry King. I found yeah. out a way to tell you. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, that sure fits in together, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> He's fun to listen to for about five, ten minutes. But He's only fun right. to listen to when the people from here are calling in. You know? mm-hmm. That's when it's <laughs> yeah. really fun. Yeah. I don't hey, know who that is. is. I don't know who that is. What's the question? Hey, uh... I, I picked up your show on the ground in Vero Beach and on the ground. Augustine in the air on the airplane. Hmm. Oh, in the airplane? I thought maybe just in the air. No, uh, <laughs> on the ground in Vero Beach, uh, loud and clear. Well, not so loud, but clear. Great. With an AM. On the ground in Vero Beach. Well, yeah. there are a lot of people have been on the ground. By the way, when I get done today, Mitch, I'm going to cut all those spots in that little room. It's going to be empty, right, when I get off that little uh, ugly room in there? Wherever you want, I don't care. Just on a big reel, just to get it over with, like real fast, like in about four minutes. <laughs> uh, Vero Beach, Terminal Place. Yeah, Terminal. My mm-hmm. mom lives there. Nice town, but, but. But. Also, uh, listen, uh, I understand Robin was at the uh, remote. Robin was there for yep. a terminal amount of time, okay, uh-huh. just forever, just on and on and on. But <laughs> luckily, uh, somebody handled that. It was great. And I didn't <laughs> so have to speak. get it. It was, was kind of like a pseudo-psychological conversation. I heard little bits and pieces Did in the you? background. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Hey, Glenn? Yeah. Are Robin's age, waist size, and IQ all the same number? Yes. I see. And she told us that she had come out the Saturday before, and we weren't there. Yeah. <laughs> That's a true story, That by is the way. true. Yeah. I love it. So she's a little confused, but she does live in Plantation, so she, she's got an excuse. Mm-hmm. But I really enjoyed talking to her. Yeah, she was all right. Yeah. For a while. <laughs> well, I enjoyed talking to you guys. <laughs> okay, up. well, I would say it's about the same. Okay. Have a Keep great day. We can say that. See ya. Okay. <laughs> 29 past 11. At W. What was that? Uh, at WIOZ. Boy, that was strange. Well, now here's a great record, which they also don't play. I don't want to start in on magic again. And I know that the trend went zooming. They had these enormous numbers. Great trend. Their music has gotten so sour, so bad. I don't know what's wrong with them. I don't know what's wrong with them. Their music sucks compared to what it used to be. They play all these, like, sleepy, dreamy, um, it's like Gloves 94 oldies, okay? They don't... They played Bobby Vinton again Saturday night. I uh, Love How You Love Me by Bobby Vinton. Boy. Oh, man. Not I think Saturday they must, night they must have a Polish program director over there. Or music director or something, okay? Because you know those Polish people in Bobby Vinton. They just, <laughs> they just go nuts. Hey, baby, I haven't heard this record. I can't remember the Shouldn't last Shouldn't that be on like at least every half yeah. hour power rotation? Sure. Never will hear it. Hmm. Really pisses me off, too. Anyway, it's 1130 <laughs> at WIOD. Here's Palm Beach. Hello. Yeah, Neil, I haven't heard that song since I listened to Cool 105.9 last week. Well, that was a good station. It sure is. That's wonderful. You can take that thing from Fort Pierce all the way up to Jacksonville. Yeah, I'll take it back. It's a great station. Absolutely great. They have these little things that they do once in a while, too, which makes it nice. Uh, you know, when you have an oldie station like that, you know about things. You like to have a theme for every one of your shows, I know. So, yeah, <laughs> like our theme today. Yeah. You know, we need pirate radio this week, though, because they're playing the Cubs. Yeah, thank get. God for that, boy. I, ho- I wonder how we get to play the Phillies. That's what I want to know. I don't know. You'll play the Phillies after they trade for uh, Guerrero, guys like that, and they'll win every game in the world. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Hey, I hear that uh, it's on the table where Pete Rose is in a little bit of trouble. No, that's just a rumor. Oh, okay. I just thought I on Sportsline the other night. No, no he, in fact, he said don't bet on it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's, it's, you know it's, it's nice when you can do cocaine, you can rape people, you can murder, but whatever you do, don't gamble. Well, see, that's what really kills me. And, of course, I can understand if you're involved in the thing, you can't be betting, you know, there's a conflict of interest there, obviously. There's always the fear that somebody is throwing a game or something. And, it, you know, it, it, it's dangerous for the integrity of the sport. But on the other hand, you hear all these people sitting around who are, who are betting with bookies and who are giving the odds on high school polo, water polo games, uh-huh. and they're, like, decrying this terrible thing. He's got this gambling thing. and all. You know, I just, uh, it's... I just don't understand that whole bookie thing to begin with. You know, that's the one thing in America, everybody just winks and laughs and everybody does it. God forbid some guy should get caught, like, with a prostitute out on Biscayne Boulevard and they're going to crucify him and destroy his life and put it on the front page of the newspaper. But if you bet illegally in this country, no problem at all. Yeah, 
Yeah. I don't understand it. I don't either. I well, mean, don't think... get me wrong. I'm all for gambling, but why the hell isn't it legal? Yeah. That judge, that you know, was pretty funny watching that yesterday. Well, the judge, uh, I don't want to say it. No, He's no. already got his comeback line for next week, though. Mm-hmm. When they suspend Rose for a year or whatever, the people in Cincinnati going to climb up the steps of the courthouse. He's going to say, hey, I never promised you a Rose pardon. Cute. Not Bye. bad. Have a great life, sir. All of that to get to that line, okay? Well, it was all right, wasn't it? Mild, mm-hmm. moderate. It's 11.32 at WIB. It's over. We have an opening in Palm Beach. I guess we better mention that, huh? And now I'm going to start this spot a little bit early because it's going to take me a little bit of time because I want to, uh, we already discussed this with an earlier caller who unsolicited uh, called in right in the first call, I think, yeah. about the melting pot. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I have to laugh when I listen to my colleague in the afternoon going on about this other second-rate fondue place because it's a joke. And, oh, the melting pot, and you notice he never mentions the melting pot by name. I'll be glad to mention St. Gregory's because I, we're not paranoid at the melting pot, okay? Mm-hmm. In fact, you notice on national TV, a lot of times they mention a competitor sure. by name. That's, uh, that's old hat if you're not paranoid. And uh, mm-hmm. the bottom line is that the reason they don't serve veal, for example, fondue at the melting pot is it doesn't work. Not everything is, mention, is meant to be dunked in the fondue pot. Mm-hmm. And I can think of several things right off the bat. <laughs> And uh, lobster, the same. They tried that originally. The first place to try it was the melting pot. They tried it as a special, I think, for Father's Day a year or so ago. Mm-hmm. And it just, they didn't like it. It just didn't work out. They, in fact, they want their product to be fantastic, to be sensational, to be orgasmic. And that's why they go to great lengths to use the very finest meats and the greatest seafood and the freshest, crunchiest vegetables. And, of course, that great chocolate fondue for dessert, including the unparalleled white chocolate with amaretto, without almonds in it, by the way. You won't find anything bumpy or lumpy in your chocolate fondues at the melting pot because they don't melt up Nestle's bars with almonds, okay? It's just, uh, just not the way it's done. So you can go to the other place and you can get, you know, oh, you get something for free, which, of course, is Steve's idea of a great place to eat is if you get something for free. The melting pot, the prices are so reasonable and the food is so great, they don't have to give food away for free to do a tremendous job, which they are. And uh, so the bottom line is if you want a great experience, tremendous service, and delicious fondue, the one place to think of is the melting pot, with three locations, 9835 Sunset Drive in South Miami, 3143 Northeast 163rd in North Miami Beach, and West Sample Road just east of Pine Island in Coral Springs. Except no cheap imitators, you head for the melting pot. Speaking of shameless... <laughs> I don't believe this, man. Fat Rich just walks into on Monday, no less. Monday. Monday. Straight from his... Incredible display <laughs> at Toyota of Hollywood on Saturday, in which he ate an entire tray of meatballs while standing up. <laughs> it was shocking. You hear the guy call and said you ate his pizza? <laughs> he ripped off the guy's pizza. Is that a true story? <laughs> oh, not that, it, not that he remembers. Right. Okay. Yeah. When you go, when you're about, when you've eaten so much, you're ready to go into a coma. You don't always remember everything that you <laughs> stole. Okay. So he doesn't remember it, but I'm sure it must be true. Anyway, he heard that we had Arnold's coming in today, so he just happened to come in a little bit early today. And I noticed the bark. You noticed I brought my own today because uh, they brought it in the other day free. Steve was happy about that. Now, <laughs> now you're getting the hang of it, okay? You're really yeah. getting the hang of it. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the bark side root beer is incredible. And it'll kind of probably, uh, you know, Wayne, he'll probably bring in some birch beer. So you'll have to help him because we got that container we got to give back to him. That the frosted mug, which they do now have frosted mugs over there mm-hmm. for the uh, birch beer. Okay, so you don't have to water it down with ice, which dilutes the quality of the birch beer. You have to be a real connoisseur for that stuff. Anyway, what was I going to do before he uh, came in and just totally threw me off? I had something very important I was going to pass along, something shocking. Just slipped by. Slipped right on by. We want to congratulate Zeta, by the way, on that tremendous remote they did. <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel if you went out to do a thing like that and there were like six, seven people showed up and right next door, yeah. we were there with people lined up as far as the... It was a bitter pill to swallow, I bet. There was no one there you know, when I drove out. A bitter Seriously. pill to swallow. Not a person. Well, this whole audience was there. Yeah, Nobody. not a person. Yeah. <laughs> what a shame, huh? But like I said, uh, we're going to be, speaking of gambling, we're going to be taking up uh, office pool on when Mark Kuhn and Rose Folger both get it at the same time. I mean, how can how long can that go on? Amazing. Amazes me. Oh, I know why Rich showed up today, of course, with that big smile on his face, because here's another one of these smarmy New York Met fans. Uh, He's all excited. Hey, we beat the we Phillies. Go. We beat the Phillies. <laughs> big deal, okay? The Rochester Red Wings could beat the Phillies, okay? In June, in swoon. Yeah, we lost three games, okay? They forget about the five in a row we won before that, including two in Montreal. 
We'll see how the Mets do in Montreal the next three days, okay? We'll see just how great they do up there. Meantime, it's uh, like there's three teams within a half a game. So it's anybody's race. Anybody's race. And I'll grant you, we're falling apart at the seams, but uh, we put on a good show for a while anyway. Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Great. How you doing, Bert? Um, okay. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not a cup. He's all upset because he, we got a... Let me, let me tell the audience a little story, okay? There were a lot of people who came by on Saturday who were Cubs fans, and they had, you know, shirts on or caps or whatever. Every time, and, and he wasn't even paying any attention. He's talking to Robin and the dark lady for three hours, okay? But any time anybody mentioned baseball, all of a sudden his head started perspiring and he got red in the face. Oh, are we going to have to hear about this for three hours? Nobody was even talking to him about it, okay? But it just it's like a Pavlovian response, okay? Like an automatic reflex. A little uh, bit of exaggeration. He, he could be sitting at home down in Kendall, and somebody in Sunrise could be talking baseball, and all of a sudden he starts sweating and getting palpitations. He doesn't know why, but he gets upset. Well, I was there on Saturday. I tried to get an autograph from the bird. He was a bit too busy. He uh, was busy. <laughs> he was real busy. Yeah, I got uh, I got my picture taken with you, Neil. I don't know if you remember me. I was the hippie type with the hat on. Whatever you say, yeah. Um, I was wondering if I'm going to get that into an 8 by 10 I was wondering if I sent it into you with a uh, return envelope, if you could autograph it. Of course, no problem. Okay. Just send uh, 50 or 100 bucks. Okay, 100. No, no, no problem. Okay, Um, I was also wondering, did uh, the D lady show up there? Of course. I don't know. I don't want to say her name. Not the dork lady, but, you know. Oh. Who? Donna. No. Oh, no. She no. never showed up. She's another one of those all talks. She didn't show up. No. Or if she did, she didn't. Uh, we don't know who we she was. Yeah, I, I know who she is. And I didn't Unfortunately, the, uh, what's her name, Bambi did not show up with her mm -hmm. panties, and there were a lot of guys really pissed about that. <laughs> True. Uh -huh. In fact, there were guys taking off their underwear in the hallway, and they were getting upset. <laughs> Bird, was that, um, is that Robin sitting next to you with the Great. Boy, this guy. I'm yeah. Kidding. He must know that lunch is coming from Arnold's today. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh huh. Okay, well that's about it, Neil. Uh, mm -hmm. I was kind of starstruck there on Saturday. I didn't tell you about what? I don't know. Just just seeing you in person, Neil. You just stunned. Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why we stay inside most of the time. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. Okay, let me call uh, Rob and Todd. You're both a couple of douchebags. You're right. Okay, thanks, Neil. See ya. Bye bye. Twenty till noon at WIOD. Boy, it's a great day uh, for the Irish, isn't it? Hmm. That's an old saying, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's a great day for the Irish. I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, glory fades for radio news. We haven't had too much of a chance to get into this in depth. 